The sleep had taken me again. Jeez, this is worse than hibernation. At least when I'm hibernating, I move a little bit. Oh, jeez. Every time I get up, my bones are just cracking. Oh, shit. Oh, what is wrong with me? Oh, oh, must have been, must have been the transformation. Ah. Oh, as I reach up, I spread my wings out, and again, I hear nothing but cracking and popping. Oh, shit. Oh, man, I hate when that happens. At least normally when I'm on my regular sleep pattern. Well, actually, I can't even say that. I don't really have a natural sleep pattern. Whatever. At least now I can just wake up and move around. As I did, I realized something else. That, uh item that I chewed on right before I went to sleep is having a bad effect. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Out the window I go, open my wings, land, and straight to the outhouse with me, trying not to leak from either end. Lord knows, ugh, that last meal was just horrible. Oh god, ugh. Oh, that's not sitting well. Oh, I didn't know the tattoo ink had gotten into their muscles. Oh, man, then they're gang members. Oh, they must have been on something, because God dang. I thought I burned a lot of calories when I transformed. Man, now I'm really hungry, because I just lost a lot more. Oh, there goes a lot more mass. Oh, help. God help me here. Whew. Thankfully, when I was down there, some of the kids decided to help me out by checking up on me and decided to bring me some water. They realized I was always thirsty. I hadn't actually swigged any water. I literally just got up, cracked my bones into place, and jumped out the window. Eventually, I was able to get inside and settle down for breakfast, and they were filling me in on what happened while I was out. The new family had been settling in. They'd been working with the rest of us, so no problems there. I just needed to get to know them, I guess. The children included. They did bring their kids along, and of course, we're sitting down for breakfast, and the kids are just rolling around and about, and jeez, I gotta tuck in my tail before somebody trips over it. Many of the women are doing quite well, too. I need to spend more time to appreciate them, as they need to know that I truly care. My kitty cats and are constantly wagging their tails in suggestive ways. Well, they're not in heat, but, you know... Man's got to take care of his women, of course. They also are uh, hmm, commenting on this new look. My new look, when I finally got in front of a mirror, is a little bit more human. Still very defined musculature. The problem is I burned through all my body fat. My tail and wings are still pretty broad, that is. Though my tail seems a little thin, but that'll fill out after I get some food in me. My feet are looking a lot more human along with my hands, although I still have claws, and they're still definitely too large for a pistol, but still, that's interesting. Feeling my face, I sighed in relief. At least, I still don't have to shave. One of the few bonuses of the transformation, and I don't have to want to wake up every morning and be like, ah, jeez, where's the razor? I spent most of the day with the children as I'd been out for a while. My eldest son is actually getting really close to flying. He's uh, about to glide a little bit, but he's still having a little trouble. Of course, he's the only one with the wings, and that's making my second son a bit upset, as he only has a tail. He really, really wants wings. So we sat him down around lunch and told him, Hey, if we get a bat, you better be hungry. He'd already heard about how I got my wings by chewing on a bat, type creature that had wings out the back itself. I, though, didn't tell him how absolutely gross that is unless you're absolutely starving. My daughters were not interested in flying. I mean, they'd watch it, but they didn't want wings. I didn't understand why. But they also don't have any interest in going out hunting or fishing with Dad. They keep with more, I guess you could say, feminine pursuits. They love playing dress-up, especially with all those new clothes. They're learning how to cook and watching over the youngest and cradling them like little babies that they are. Well, gee, I wonder what role they're going to fall into. I can already tell they're all going to be beauties. And with that thought, 
Where's my shotgun again? It was still nice to hang out with them all during the day, and eventually, I wore them out as they would simply run and chase me and stuff like that, but they're still young. They still burnt a lot of energy chasing me around, and since I just woke up, I've got plenty of energy. Not to mention, I must have had five or six servings during breakfast. I got plenty of gas in the tank, and I definitely wore them out. When I got up to see my ladies, they didn't give me a second to relax. They got very aggressive. I know that they're not officially in heat, but at the point right now, who could tell? Given one of my dolls is going to have to deal with childbirth fairly soon, and by soon I mean within a few months, I decide to recommend that we focus on her <clears throat> enjoyment of that night. We even let her sleep all the way through the next morning, and she would end up waking up probably noonish, I guess. I wasn't there. I wasn't there because I had to check on the rest of the village. Well, township, county, whatever the hell you want to call it. And turns out everything's doing well. I started by checking the center, and I flew in to check with the mayor. I could see the kids just being kids, which if I could fully smile, I would do it. Hell, they didn't even run away from me when I approached, which was a very good sign, especially from the newest kids who were there. When I talked to the mayor and a few of my friends over there, I was referring to my son and how he's about ready to fly. I asked if uh, the angels were really truly ready to fly, not just glide like I seen them. Well, the mayor was not too happy with his kids being able to fly, but they were actually content with the idea of finally being able to soar through the skies. Maybe they'd be able to take over some of my work. I definitely told him, oh yeah, that'd be nice. The next was checking over by the Riverside Homestead. The flyers were all happy to see me. Hell, everybody was wanting to see me, even the Lamia, who sometimes, eh, depending on her mood, she can be a real bitch. But this time, she was very pleasant. It would be nice if they were not all trying to be, well, shall I say, suggestive. I mean, come on, seriously, ladies? Your kids are around. Can you tone it down just a little bit? And try not to reach under my loincloth, okay? I've already, you know, I had to kind of tell them that they're not going to get a reaction today. That ain't going to happen. They didn't understand. They thought I was being mean or something like that. So I changed the topic. And eventually I brought up the fact that it looks like the flyers of the first generation being born are going to be able to take off. I looked over and I could see the young ones practicing gliding. They don't have enough strength in their muscles to actually fly, but from the looks of it, it's not going to take long. The family is clearly growing. Eventually, I had to leave and I checked on the arachne, and needless to say, they are more than contented with what they got right now. After catching that swarm and collecting all the pieces, They've got more food than they could burn through in two years plus. They're not even going to want to deal with anything. The only problem is, is that they are chowing down on a lot of those eggs. And because of that, they seem to, shall we say, like the new look and are constantly asking me to partake, which confuses me. I thought they liked guys who look young and I... First off, I don't look young, and I don't look like a guy. Well, I sort of look like a guy now. Boy, these transformations are a bitch. I was able to keep them off me by, well, using the truth, which they started giggling when I told them how drained I am and how they're not going to get a reaction either. The arachne, who are mostly female, were simply kind of chuckling as I was leaving. My next stop was the Elven Village. I definitely have to call it that because all the construction, it might as well be. Multiple families now with multiple buildings, with the buildings either carved directly into the mountain or right up onto the trees. It's like something out of some sort of fantasy land. It's weird. The place is lively too, though very secluded and compared to all the rest of the villages. If you can't fly, you are going to burn a lot of energy getting up here. I can still pick out the boy in the crowd though. Poor kid. 
he's going to take a really long time to heal, at least mentally. I'm pretty sure physically he's going to heal up just fine. Their version of the mayor likes to visit and converse, and boy does that man like to talk. And he is unbelievably grateful for the footwear. I didn't understand this until they actually showed me the shoes that they had been wearing. It was patchwork, quite literally a bunch of cloth that they had tied like some sort of medieval boot. It was crazy. After my visit with them, I headed over to the smaller farm and visit as well. This was all because I was moving letters. It was a full day's job and it was only done once a week, but it's something that had to be done to make sure everybody stayed connected. Though paper was not hard to come across, well, some of these papers are really heavy. A lot of times they're asking me to transport goods and, oh, no, that gets too damn heavy, too damn fast. No, thank you. As more lost are found, those who are just trying to survive out there in the woods, we do our best to help them set down roots. Many of these groups have been traveling pretty much every day for the past decade, trying to stay one step ahead of whatever issues are coming. Once we get a hold of them, they get to choose where and if they stay. Most of the non-humans usually want to stay with us. It makes them feel safe, as many of them have been shot at or hunted by humans, or in some cases treated very, very poorly. Full-on humans usually don't stick around. That is, unless they're in some sort of non-human community or mix or family, whatever you want to call it. The issue is, it doesn't matter if it's human or non-human, the first contact is always a touchy situation. Many of them are armed and they're all scared. They're all nervous. So usually what I'll do is I'll get a rock or two and I'll drop a rock in front of them trying to hit another rock, something to make a loud bang, something to get them to stop, and then I'll yell to them. Usually just yelling in a common language is enough to get them to say, what the heck is this? And then I'll throw a smaller rock with a very large note attached to it. And that note simply reads, we're not your enemy. Can we talk? Wave if you want to talk. And almost all the times they'll wave to us. A few times, I've been out on patrol or delivering letters or something, and I come back to find out that we're three, four, five, six personnel heavier now. It's a wonderful feeling. The only issue is, once people get settled, during the time of year, they might not be able to do much before winter sets in again. Winter around here, it's, it's not something I look forward to. We need to take stock of what we have. We have to make sure there's a good harvest because there's always more personnel to feed, more homesteads that need to be protected. There's even more species now. We have a few that look like minotaurs. Well, sort of. They don't quite look that bovine, but seriously, they still have horns on their heads and they still have all the hoofs on the feet and all that. I'm not even kidding. I was amazed at this. And they're one of the only ones who are as tall as I am. Along with this comes more commerce. And of course, everyone trying to get what they need and of course, what they want. Of course, the wants will always take a second seat to needs. And everyone needs to survive. And now that there's so many that need to survive, we're actually spread across even more valleys controlled by us. Well, controlled is a loose term, really. We're a tight-knit group, and of course, everybody is doing this for their own survival. During the winter, we don't have to worry much because the bugs, they hibernate, just like me. As the hibernation starts to set in, I can feel it. It's not quite the same as the sleep, the one that makes us transform to mutate. No, this is a very slow, slow burn. As everything starts to get cold, we start to get very lethargic and we get very, very hungry. At this point, I'm just upset. I won't be awake to see the birth of my next child. She's only about a month away. Damn it. 
Come on, even my platoon sergeant got to stay back and watch his kid get born. Can't I stay awake? Ugh, it's like a five-year-old trying to stay awake for New Year's. It's not going to work. Though this time, I won't be alone in my hibernation. My sons are also going to have to hibernate. And from the look of it, one of my daughters might have to, too. The verdict's not in yet. But she's getting very, very lethargic like us. I want to keep my eyes open, but I, I just can't. I've already sat there for about a week and just basically gorged myself full all sorts of food and chugged so much water. Oh, I hate having a gut and now I have this big bulge. Holy shit, am I pregnant? What the fuck? Then I look at my sons and they're thinking the same thing. My daughter is not exactly happy at the look considering how young she is. But then again, none of us are going to be looking at each other. We just can't keep our eyes open. As the kids climb into the nest, which is kind of what we call the bedding area, it's pretty much set up like a nest, and we know that the dolls and my feline femme fatales are going to cover us up with blankets as soon as we're passed out. I look up and smile and say goodnight to them. I say pretty much the same joke I always do at this time of year. Hey, just, just don't, don't wake me unless it's an emergency. And one of them will always answer, Don't worry, honey. We'd never wake a sleeping dragon. <laughs>